The Stokes theorem, also known as the fundamental theorem for curl, is widely used in physics, engineering, and other fields to calculate fluxes and circulations of vector fields over closed surfaces. For example, it can be used to calculate the flow of a fluid around an object or the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. In this video, our goal is to provide the most intuitive and concise way of understanding the Stokes theorem. Let's begin. I assume most of you already know what is a vector field. But for completeness, I shall briefly remind you that a vector field is a function that assigns a vector to each point in a region of space. Here, we shall denote this vector field as B. The vectors in a vector field can represent various physical quantities such as velocity, force, electric field, or magnetic field. In the case of fluid flow, such as the study of wind and tornado, these vector fields have a tendency to circulate, or rotate, as shown. The magnetic field that is produced by a current carrying wire also circulates around the wire, as depicted by iron filings as shown. Thus, the circulation of a vector field is an important concept, and it will be a very useful quantity if we can mathematically calculate it. Consider the following vector field B. Intuitively, the circulation of a vector field around a region, as indicated by the closed path, L, as shown, measures the degree to which the vector field rotates or flows around L path with positive orientation goes in the counterclockwise manner, or the right thumb rule convention as shown. Mathematically, the circulation can be defined as the line integral of the vector field, V, around the closed path L. It is understandable that only the field component that has a finite projection onto the path will contribute to the circulation. This is mathematically represented by the dot product between the field B and the infinitesimal vector tangent to the curve L, denoted by dL. Thus, using this framework for calculating circulation, one can in principle define a scalar field C, which measures the local circulation of the vector field B, at given position R. For example, in the highlighted region as shown, the vector field has a net counterclockwise circulation so C should be locally positive. As a counterexample, we can also find region where the vector field is circulating in the clockwise manner. Thus, C is locally negative here. Of course, we can also find region where the fields are straight flowing, and the local circulation is zero. In what follows, we want to seek a mathematical expression for calculating the local circulation or what is typically called the curl of the vector field at R. Let the vector field be B, and let's consider an infinitesimal area ds, located at the position vector, R, as shown. First, let us consider the surface to be oriented on the xy plane. In other words, the surface vector is pointing along z. We can write down explicitly the B components along the four corners of the elemental area ds as shown. Here, we denote the discrete steps in X and Y as delta X and delta Y respectively. The circulation of the vector field, B, around DS can be broken into four segments, as indicated by the arrows. The contributions from the path along positive and negative Y directions are given as shown. It is given by the field tangential to the path, which in this case is the field component BY. The contribution to the circulation is given by the average tangential field multiplied by the path length, delta y. We see that the combined contributions of these path integrals are the finite difference approximation to the differential of by with respect to x, multiplied by the elemental area, delta x multiplied by delta y. In similar fashion, we can work out the contributions to the circulation by the paths along positive and negative x. This time, it is the bx component that is tangential to the paths. The contribution to the circulation is given by the average tangential field multiplied by the path length, delta x. We see that the combined contributions of these path integrals are the finite difference approximation to the differential of bx with respect to y, multiplied by the elemental area, delta x multiplied by delta y, 
as shown in red. Hence, the net contribution to the circulation around an elemental area ds in the xy plane is given by the difference in the cross differential of the in plane field components multiplied by the elemental area. In this case, where the surface vector of ds is along z, we shall denote the circulation as cz, and it is given by the differential of by with respect to x, minus the differential of bx with respect to y, multiplied by ds. However, in general, the surface can be arbitrarily oriented. Consider the 3D case. Where the Cartesian coordinate system is as depicted. Consider an arbitrarily oriented elemental surface ds, where the normal to the surface is given by the vector n. What would be the field circulation, C, of this arbitrary oriented surface? The circulation C will now consist of contributions from the three projected planes, with normal vectors along x, y and z. The contribution from the projected plane with normal oriented along z is denoted by Cz, which we derived previously. However, now, we must also include the Cx and Cy contributions, whose expressions can also be derived using similar arguments we presented. Inspecting the form of these C components, we see that these can be written compactly as the the differential vector cross the B vector, dot product with the elemental surface as shown in the highlighted box. The differential vector is usually represented by the nabla vector as shown. The operation, nabla vector cross the B field, is also known as the curl of B. Therefore, the local circulation of a field is given by the curl of the field dot product with the elemental surface area, ds. In other words, we have just derived the Stokes theorem, applied to an arbitrary oriented elemental surface ds. We summarize the key result in the red highlighted bubble, which states that the circulation of b around the perimeter of an elemental area, is equal to the curl of b integrated over the same elemental area. Our remaining task is to show that this result can also be applied to a finite surface area as shown. According to the Stokes theorem, the circulation of B along the blue path L which encircles the area, should be equal to the integrated curl of the B locally. Let's see how to can understand this intuitively. Previously, we have shown that the circulation of B around the perimeter of an elemental area, is equal to the curl of B dot product with the same elemental area. Here, the latter is represented by C. Combining two elemental areas, we see that part of the circulations from the two elemental areas cancel along the path where the two areas are joined, as indicated by the cross symbol. They cancelled because the direction of the path from the two elements are opposite. Thus, the sum of the circulations from two elemental areas is the same as the circulation around the perimeter of the joined areas. Now, joining four elemental areas, we can apply similar logic. Thus, the sum of the circulations from four elemental areas is the same as the circulation around the perimeter of the combined areas. We can extend this argument to a finite area, where again, the sum of the circulations from all elemental areas is the same as the circulation around the perimeter of the combined areas. In other words, the net total circulation due to all elements is simply equal to the circulation around the perimeter of the combined area. This is given by the expression on the left-hand side of the equation. As we previously shown, the circulation for each elemental area is given by the curl of B dot product with the elemental area, which we represent by C. Therefore, the total circulation is also equals to the integrated sum of all the elemental C, which is the expression on the right-hand side of the equation. Thus, we arrived at the final form of the Stokes theorem which relates the local behavior of the vector field, as measured by its curl, to its global behavior, as measured by the line integral around the boundary of the surface. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.